Hello and good evening and welcome to what is episode 80 of The Organist Entertains. Tonight we have more of your hymn requests and songs. Looking at the list tonight, there's only a few from Bells Hill Central. Where are your requests, folks? Not that we don't have enough to fill a short episode of The Organist Entertains tonight with help of Anne White, Sheila Miller, Reverend Tony Newnham, and we have Emma and Cathy from Bells Hill Central just keeping our end up a little bit tonight. Episode 80 begins with a request from Anne White. Anne is a, a friend of The Organist Entertains and a singer with the virtual choir, which we um, conducted, if that's the word to use, over a, a chunk of 2021. Her first hymn choice is based on Psalm 23. But it's not the Lord's my shepherd or the King of love my shepherd is. It's in heavenly love abiding, set to that wonderful Welsh tune of Penlan. The last verse ventures into Noel Rothstone's 400 last verses. So I do hope that everyone enjoys the stirring and moving harmonies found in that book. You'd actually think that I was promoting it and getting some sort of subscription from each time I mention it, but I don't, honestly. Anne's hymn choice is, of course, In Heavenly Love Abiding, which may bring many people much comfort as it is a hymn full of images of personal faith and devotion. However, it's also a hymn which is quite frequently sung at funeral and memorial services. In heavenly love abiding.
Our second hymn choice tonight keeps with Anne White. The hymn which she has chosen is It's Me, It's Me, It's Me, O Lord, Standing in the Need of Prayer. It reminds us that we are one family together, whether we're brother, sister, neighbour, but we're all in need of prayer. And it's not one of these hymns which is slow and gentle. It's got a nice jaunty, almost jazzy style to it as we sing through it. So thank you, Anne, for requesting such a wonderful hymn. It's me, it's me, it's me, O oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. Our next hymn choice tonight comes from Sheila Miller, a friend of the organist entertains from Tweed Bank in the Borders. Sheila actually has three hymn choices tonight and numbers one and two come just now. How good it is to thank the Lord is taken from the Psalms and it's in our hymn book set to the tune of St. Fulbert. It's a wonderfully joyful hymn, reminding us of how we can praise God. The second verse talks about praising him with the instruments, the stringed instruments, and making a joyful noise to the Lord. It's a hymn which once often graced the praise lists of Sunday morning services, but has like most of the metrical and traditional psalms, slightly fallen out of favour. So thank you, Sheila, for requesting this wonderful psalm. How good it is to thank you, Lord.
Sticking with Sheila, we have our next request tonight. It follows on from Sheila's love of massed choir singing. And when I think of this hymn, I think of the massed male voice choirs, not of the Welsh Valleys, but of Hamilton Town Hall. The Lanarkshire Festival of Male Voice Choirs took place annually in Hamilton Town Hall until recently. Covid has put paid to, to most events with massed singing and hopefully it'll come back. There was always, say, half a dozen pieces that the massed choirs joined together and sung and each conductor took their turn at conducting the assembled singers. Sheila's hymn choice is one such thing that the massed choirs sung. Goahodiad, or I hear thy welcome voice. It's not in our hymn books any longer, so I've had to delve into Church Hymn, the third edition to find it, but it's there. Enjoy this wonderful hymn. It conjures up memories for many of us, and I'm sure that Alexa and Sheila are going to have wonderful pictures and images in their heads of massed choirs singing this item. I hear thy welcome voice.
Our next hymn choice is On a hill far away stood an old rugged cross. And this is a favourite hymn of two Bales Hill Central members, Emma Smith, who sings in the choir, and Cathy Bryden, who doesn't sing in the choir. It's a wonderful hymn which lots of us will remember and lots of us will enjoy singing. It talks of that passion story about how on a hill far away stood an old rugged cross and it was an emblem that is so much our faith. It tells the story of how Jesus died for our sins. And it's no wonder that it's such a favourite hymn of faith for so many, especially Emma and Cathy. So without any further ado, and I actually think that this may well be one of the top three hymns of The Organist Entertains, we have On a hill far away stood an old rugged cross.
Our next hymn choice tonight comes from the Reverend Tony Newnham. And it couldn't be more different than last week's choice from Tony. Last week, Tony chose wonderful old words, how sweet the name of Jesus sounds, but to a tune by Chris Bowater called Rachel. Tonight's hymn choice comes from the pen of Fanny Crosby. And the music is written by William Doan. It's the wonderful hymn which some of you may have forgotten through the time and years that have passed. However, once you hear it, I'm sure that you'll remember it. It's the hymn called Here From The World We Turn. Thank you, Tony, for another of your interesting hymn choices, reminding people of hymns which they may have sung moons and moons ago. But through the wonders of hymn choices, the organist entertains and the internet when it works, we can enjoy them once more. Here, from the world we turn, requested by the Reverend Tony Newnham. Moving into the last portion tonight, as we wind down for the night, we have the first of two organ pieces. Best do be mere, a wonderful organ solo by J.S. Bach, arranged by Noel Roththorne. In fact, this episode is recorded on Sunday the 24th of October, and I played it as the opening prelude this morning as I record this, but a few days ago as you hear it, and thought it would be nice to include it tonight. Best do be mere. Enjoy the wonderful soothing sounds of the organ because we have had the trumpets blazing and a fair few of our hymns tonight so far.
Second, organ item tonight isn't really an organ item. It's taken from Vivaldi's Gloria. And in Vivaldi's Gloria, it is set for continuo and a soprano solo. Domine Deus Rex Cholestis. It's obviously an arrangement of it from the original score for organ, and it shows off the beautiful flute stops that we have on the organ. And another moment for you to enjoy the softer and quieter and more mellow sounds of the organ here at Bells Hill Central. Enjoy this second organ piece tonight. Domine Deus Rex Cholestis from Vivaldi's Gloria. Well, it is night time, so I chose the next two items because it's evening. The first is something which I doubt is sung in many 
churches these days at all. However, it still is to be found in our most recent version of the Church of Scotland hymn book. The words are from the Greek third century and they are translated by John Keeble. Hail, gladdening light of his pure glory shone. It's a piece of music which is written in the pointed psalm style where you have a held chord and you repeat, not repeat, you sing the syllables of the words over it before the music moves on. And sometimes in a pointed psalm setting, it can just be a series of chords where you have repeated sentences sung over it. Hail gladdening light does have held chords with words sung over it, but then it moves into four part harmony with perhaps four crotchets in the bar, a bit like a normal hymn tune. And because of that, it would sound a bit silly not hearing the words sung with it. So instead of someone just singing, Hail gladdening light of his pure glory shone. I sing it with the organ. So that's two weeks in a row you have me singing along with the organ. But hopefully you get the gist of this hymn. You hear the mellow tones and you hear the growing power as we come to the last verse. Enjoy this something different before our last hymn choice tonight.
The day thou gavest, Lord, is ended. It's a hymn which we always sang at evening services in churches. Lots of people think that that is the only time and place that you can sing it. I beg to differ. We have, on the odd occasion, used it in church to finish our Sunday morning services. Because the hymn talks about the sun rising and setting on each continent and island. So where it's daytime somewhere, it's nighttime somewhere else. And that's a wonderful image of God's love and power in our lives. That it's everywhere, all at one time, hugging the world. That it doesn't matter whether this is the day that he gave us, which is ending, his son, S-U-N, is giving us warmth, light, and health all around the world. But his love is surrounding us all the time, all around the world, regardless of what time of the day or night it is. It is, of course, sung to the wonderful tune of Saint Clement. And if I remember correctly, there is a church tower somewhere down south that has St. Clement playing on its bells. Or is it even tied? Perhaps someone can tell me and put me right. Put a note in the live chat down below or to the side, wherever it shows on your screen. However, all that said and done, we now have the wonderful evening hymn. The day thou gavest, Lord hast ended. And we venture back with a little help from Noel for an alternative last verse.
You shall go out with joy and be led forth with peace because the mountains and the hills will break forth before you. There'll be shouts of joy and the trees of the field shall clap, shall clap their hands. That's how we're going to finish tonight with a wonderfully rousing, uplifting song requested by Sheila Miller. Just in case, Sheila, you'd thought that I'd forgotten about the third choice tonight, that's why I've saved it till last. I know the choir here at Bales Hill Central enjoy singing this short song immensely because we quite often have it as the kind of recessional hymn, if we wish to call it that, after, at the end of our church services. And you can see them on the seats behind me, up on the, on the choir box, dancing away and clapping their hands as we sing it perhaps three, four, five times, each time getting a shade quicker. Until, of course, they all fall down in their seats because I've played it perhaps just that little bit too quick. Thank you, Sheila, for requesting our final item tonight, a joyful piece, a joyful hymn of praise that we do go out with joy. Thanks, folks, for tuning in tonight with episode 80 of The Organist Entertains. Moving forward, a decision has been made. Now that we've reached a milestone 80, I think the time is right to now implement this different frequency of our Organist Entertains. We will remain on Wednesday evenings. We will remain at eight o'clock. However, we are moving to fortnightly. So episode 81 will come to you in two weeks time. Two weeks time will be the 10th of November. So that will be a special armistice edition of The Organist Entertains. It will include hymns such as, O oh God, Our Help in Ages Past, Eternal Father, strong to save. I vow to thee, my country, and make me a channel of your peace. If you have any other hymns which you would like to request for remembrance 
Sunday, Armistice, for our next Organist Entertains, which will be episode 81 on the 10th of November. Please do get in touch. I'm sure things like Will Your Anchor Hold and Abide With Me will return as well. And now that I'm thinking of things, God as our strength and refuge to the tune Dam Busters will probably make an appearance too. So thank you for tuning in tonight with episode 80 as we've reached another milestone in The Organist Entertains. And I look forward to seeing you in a fortnight's time on the 10th of November for our Armistice Remembrance special episode. Stay safe, folks. Keep well. And I won't see you next week, but I'll see you in two weeks' time. <laughs>